And adults, if you will turn with me this morning to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I know last Sunday morning, I shared with you that this week's message would actually be part two of that message. I'm going to ask that you forgive me if you will, and let's hold on to that part number two until next week, God willing, if that's what he so desires. Whereas this morning, I want us to look at Romans chapter 8, with this morning being a very special morning for us, at least it is inside my house, as today is actually National Adoption Appreciation Day. How many of you knew that? Before you actually looked on Facebook this morning, you saw my post. Stop it, Brother Cody. Before you saw my post, how many of you actually knew that November was National Adoption Appreciation Month, and actually today is National Adoption Appreciation Day? With my wife and I having adopted two children inside of our home, today is very special for us, and I know it is for many of you as well. And I was kind of wondering if I could ask some questions that would just kind of look and give us a perspective of how it affects our church family as a whole. If you were adopted, if you were or you are an adopted child in your family, would you stand? My daughter's not in the room. I, she's hiding. I'm trying to get underneath the crew. I'll take that one. I'm going to ask again, if you were or you are an adopted child, please stand. You're my child. Stand for just a second. If you have ever taken in an adopted child or even a grandchild in your home, I'm going to ask you to stand. If you've taken in a child adopted-wise to your home, please stand. Thank you. Grand, grandchild or a parent yourself. If you were ever in a foster home as a foster child, I'm going to ask you to stand. Anybody? If your home has ever been open to be a foster home for a child, I'm going to ask you to stand. I know Brother Cody, Ms. Tess, several inside the church today. If you know someone, whether it be a family member or a friend that has been adopted or in a foster care program, I'm going to ask you to stand. Your pastor has an adopted child, so we should all be standing. I want to make sure I got us at the very end to make sure we're on the same queue. You may be seated. I literally just wanted you to pay attention and recognize how many people even inside of our church body are affected according to something such as this. And I want to share some statistics if you don't mind. As of today, November of 2018, did you know that there are over 1.5 million adopted children inside the United States? 1.5 million adopted children. 135,000 children are adopted every year inside the United States of America. Watch this. We have over 425,000 children in the foster care program. And of those, those 425,000, more than 60% will stay in their foster care program between two and five years before they are ever adopted. And even more sad to that fact is some will never be adopted. There are over 114,000 children sitting in foster care programs right now waiting to be adopted. Why? I want us to stop and consider that truth this morning, asking ourselves, why are so many not being looked out for? Church, only 2% of America today 2% of Americans step forward for adoption, whereas one-third of Americans say they've considered it. They know there's a problem. They know there's an epidemic there, if you will. They've considered it, but they never step forward. Only 2% do. And again, I'm going to ask the question, why? When we live in a world, in a country, if you will, the United States, it's as blessed as we are, as fortunate as we are, why are so few children being looked at even today? I'm going to come back to a simple truth, church. I believe we forget. How easily we, as even Christians today, as children of God, forget who we are and what's been done for us. Because I believe if we fully understood the relationship that we have with God the Father, if we remember how we came into that relationship through Jesus Christ the Son, I think we begin to consider things a whole lot differently. So this morning, I want to take a moment to remind us what's been done for us. I want to remind us as a church body, as children of God, what has been done on our behalf. I want us to consider why adoption matters to God. So Romans chapter 8, verses 14, 15, and 16 this morning, I'm going to ask, if you will, to stand in honor of God's word 
as we read this passage this morning. Again, Romans chapter 8, verses 15, 16, and 17. Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 15, 16, and 17. Paul says this, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together with him. He said again, church, we have not again received the bondage of fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by which we can cry out, Abba, Father, will you pray with me? Father God, in Jesus' name, we do ask, God, that you come and move in this time, that you stir in our hearts. God, as we look in your word, as we're reminded of this truth, God, I pray that you would convict us, God, that you would stir us, you'd challenge us. God, that you would change us in the name of Jesus to be the men, the women, the children of God you called for us to be, understanding what you've done for us and now what you call for us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Church, how many of you at your home have ever had the privilege of watching uh, a bird build its nest? It's funny, the memories that come to your mind. I remember my father, when he had his house in, in Chipley, Florida, I remember one of the things that he loved probably most was the hanging plants he had back on the back porch. He loved his hanging plants. He nurtured them and cared for them, watered them more than I think he took care of me sometimes. He loved those plants that were there. And what was really funny to me was the battle that would ensue. Every year that he would put these new hanging plants on the back porch, the birds saw that as an opportunity of security. They would come and they would want to build their nests inside of his plants because they figured no animal could come in and get their, their nest. And so my dad would get angry and say, I'm not letting the birds in there. And he would put stuffed animals and he'd put toys in there thinking he was going to scare them away. And I would watch this feud take place between my dad and these birds every single year. The birds always won. I watched as the birds would come in and they'd build a nest and I watched as they would lay the eggs. And I'd watch sometimes as they hatch the eggs. Have you ever seen it before? Anybody else been there? What takes place? Yeah, let's just say for a moment, if that bird comes in, builds that nest, and lays the eggs, what happens if a person comes in and begins to mess with those eggs? Moving them around or taking them out and holding on them and touching them, and then they put them back in. Or maybe after the eggs are hatched and the baby birds are there, if you come in and you mess with those baby birds and you move them around and you try to put them back, what does the mama bird usually do if you've ever touched the egg or you've touched the baby chickens or the baby birds? She'll never touch them again. Why? It's kind of a, an odd thing if you notice. It's almost like she has that, if it's not only mine, I don't want anything to do with it mentality. And I've realized how much we're the same. I realized in the name of Jesus how much we're the same. We have a tendency, even as the church of Jesus Christ, to look at these children that are out in the world that are around us. We know that orphanages exist. We know that children's homes exist, that there are kids there in need. But so many times we look out and we think, you know what? That's somebody else's problem. Those are not my children. And too often we look at different aspects inside those families and we think, you know what? Skin color. Maybe a, a background of a past that that child comes from a, a prostitution home or a, in the slums or a drug area. We think, you know what? I don't want to deal with something that somebody else has touched or somebody else has ruined in some way, shape, or form. We're quick, church, to raise our hands. I'm against abortion in the name of Jesus Christ. It's murder, an untouched child. We say that. I won't even vote for someone who's standing for abortion, murdering that unborn baby. Yet we will not open our home to the child that is taken in and it is born this life that then doesn't have a home to go to. Church, I look at this, this predicament that comes before us and it begins to convict my heart and I wonder this, where is the church today? Where is the church today? How today are we being the church of Jesus Christ to this need that sits before us? Church, if we do not want abortions to take place, we have to be willing to open our homes. We have to be willing to open our lives to love on those that are unloved even today. I believe it's time for the church to rise up. So this morning, I want us to consider this morning, as children of God, I want us to consider our own adoption again to see if it doesn't make us question whether or not God's not even calling for us to open our homes inside this church body, to love on these children that need a home as well. So if you have your note page this morning, I want us to look at number one. Simple reminder number one, I want us to consider our adoption. 
I want us as children of God this morning inside this church body, I want us to consider our adoption. Coming from verse 15, if you will. Paul says again, for you, I want you to circle that word you inside your Bible. You, he's referring to Christians, to children of God. If we've made Jesus Christ master and Lord of our lives, he's referring to us. He says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of what, church? Adoption. You receive that spirit of adoption. Before we get into that word adoption, I want to dig back into the first part of that verse. What is the Apostle, speak, uh, the Apostle Paul speaking of when he says, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear? What is he speaking of? Church, understand, he's speaking of our former life before salvation, our life before Jesus Christ became master and Lord of our lives. Before Christ, we all had the unfortunate reality of being born and bound into what? Sin. Before Jesus Christ, every person is born into sin inside their lives, and that sin comes to an understanding of bondage. Church being in bondage in a life of fear in every aspect of our life. Think about this. How many people do you uh, today do you know that walk in the fear of suffering? They don't want any kind of a suffering in their life, a fear of health issues. What's well, inside my family? I know it could come into my life as well, and they walk into fear, the aspect of death. Everybody walks into aspect, the fear of the aspect of death, the fear of life, the fear of failure, the fear of disapproval. We have a fear to, uh, a tendency to fear so many things inside of our lives. And church, that fear again, as the word of God tells us, becomes a bondage to us, a spirit, if you will, that wraps itself around us and holds us captive from living the life that Jesus Christ has called us to, a bondage inside of our life. But I want us to remember this this morning. Hear me now. If we know Jesus Christ, if we accept him into our lives as master, Lord, and Savior, he tells us that that old spirit of bondage is immediately done away with inside of our life. In church, that's an aspect of worship this morning. We sing about it in the songs that we sing today. Understanding what Christ has set us free from. He goes on in verse 15 to say this, for you did not receive that spirit of bondage again to fear. You've been saved now. You're, uh, saved now. You're not going back to the same thing. He says, but you have received the spirit of of adoption. You've been pulled out of that old bondage, that old fear, and you've been brought into the new way of life. That word adoption meaning this, to take by choice into a relationship, to accept formally, to choose to care for someone. Look at me, church. That's what Jesus Christ did for you. I get that today. Now that I have a home where we've taken children into our lives and I understand that concept of what you're bringing somebody in by choice, by desire, what we want, I realize that's what Christ has done for me. That's what Jesus did for me. I didn't deserve it. But in love and grace and mercy, he called me by name. That's why we sing that song this morning. I love the fact that I can say who I am because Christ said that I am today. He called me by name. He chose me inside my life. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them he gives what? The right to become children of God. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Why? To redeem those who were born under the law, that we might receive what? The adoption as sons. That's a non-gender specific, if you will. Church, he's talking to men and women alike. We might come into the adoption of sons and daughters of God. Verse 6, and because you are sons and daughters of God, God has sent forth his spirit into the son, into our hearts, by which we can cry out what? Abba, Father. Church, what does that word Abba mean? We've spoken this before. Daddy. He says because of that truth, because we've been adopted into the family of God, because we as children of God today, because we are children of God today, we can cry out Abba, Father our daddy, our father. Church, it's in our adoption into God's family that we're set free from that former bondage and sin and we're placed into this new relationship inside that adoption understanding that gives us the right to be called children of God. We're not just saved from our sins, but church, we're saved into a family of God. That's why we talk about this building not being the church. We are the church. We are the body of Christ as we together this morning can claim our our privilege and adoption being children of God. Amen? Number two, from this adoption, I also want us to understand our privilege. I want us to understand inside our adoption 
Church, our privilege. Because we call God Abba Father, our Daddy Father, we have rights this morning. We have privileges inside of our our lives. We have the privilege that we can come into God's presence at any time, church, for anything. As children of God this morning, we have the privilege of coming and bringing every aspect of our life at the feet of Jesus Christ. How many of you being a parent this morning or a grandparent this morning have ever had the the privilege of maybe about two o'clock, maybe three o'clock in the morning, your child or your grandchild being woken up due to a bad dream? Or maybe a sound that they hear outside, they hear it, and they come running into your room in the middle of the night, waking you up. Anybody else ever been there before? I remember when Autumn was little and she would do it. I don't know what, for whatever reason she would have those, uh, those night terrors is what they call it. And she'd come running across the room, the, the house, and come running, uh, running to our bedroom. You know what she found security in? She'd come and crawl up right between Heather and I, crawl up into bed and, and crawl beside us. She felt comfort. She felt warmth. She felt security in that moment. Church, do you realize that that's the same comfort we have in Jesus Christ as a child of God today? When you're walking through your struggle, when you're walking in the middle of your hurt, when you're walking through the middle of your circumstances, we can come because of our adoption, because we're children of God, we can come to God at any time for anything. It doesn't matter how big it is, and it does not matter how small it is. We can run to Abba Father. Our daddy, Father, we can cry out, I hurt. I fear. I struggle. Church, we have the privilege of knowing that we can come to God and he'll help us at all times. Why? Because we're his and he is ours. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 tells us this. We now have boldness and access with what? With confidence through faith in God. We have boldness and confidence. What? For every need we have inside of our lives. I don't ever have to stop as a child of God and say, you know what? God probably doesn't want to hear this. I, I, I shouldn't even bother God with this because this is just too small. This is just something that's just too personal. No, I can come with boldness today. I can come with a confidence inside my life. I can come boldly before the throne room of God and say, because I'm a child of God, I can lay anything at his feet. We had an awesome, powerful time with the men inside this church body this morning, right here inside this sanctuary. And it's funny how before we came in, to this time of prayer, it's funny how your pastor tries to figure out in his mind. I try to picture what it's going to be like when we come into this time. I had it all set in my mind. I had it figured out thinking, this is what it's going to look like. And we came in for this time of prayer and it went a completely different direction. And immediately I felt God saying to me, just step back and get out of the way. This is my time, not yours. But I watched as that began to take place as the men of God began to pray and some confessions started taking place. Prayer requests started taking place. And we get to begin to pray together and pray for each other. I watched as the spirit of God began to move. I watch this begin to pour out inside of our lives and begin to stir inside of our hearts. And I begin to understand it doesn't matter what our needs is. Sometimes I know this, especially as men, we don't like to confess our struggles. We don't like to confess confess our our needs, our our weaknesses. So it was a powerful moment when some of the men began to share that this morning. But I know usually we do not because I don't want somebody else to know what I'm struggling with. I don't want them to know that I'm hurting, that there's a, a problem inside my life. I wonder if sometimes we're like that with God. Don't you know that God already knows it all? In church, if we truly knew the love of God, we know that we can come before him at any time for anything we can lay at his feet. Why? Because we're his child. I am who he says that I am. Church, we are who he says that we are this morning. And this morning, inside that adoption, we have this privilege of knowing we carry the love of God inside of our lives. Number three, I want us to look at our guarantee. Our adoption, church, our privilege And now I want us to understand our guarantee. The guarantee that we gain inside our relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is what I mean by our guarantee. I've already confessed this with Autumn. She knows I'm going to talk about her for just a second. But church, I I remember the day that we still adopted Autumn into our family. She was just a few months old then, and here she is 17 years old today. She'll be graduating high school this year, um, looking at colleges, looking at all the different aspects of being a 17-year-old. Sometimes you wonder why your pastor turned gray overnight. Watch her look down. She won't even look at her daddy. She knows it's truth. But you know, there's some things I could tell you inside this adoption. I hope with all my heart, and I believe with all my heart, my daughter has never one time had to ever look and say, I'm not sure if David or Heather Hinkson love me. She's known from the entirety of her life, that we love her. For the entirety of her life, I believe with all my heart, she's never had to look and say, you know what? I don't know if I'm wanted. I don't, I'm not sure that anybody out there wants me. She can know through the adoption 
that we love her, and she can know that we desire her, we wanted her, we chose her inside of our lives. All the same, I still know to this day, and she'll confess this to you, there's still been struggles inside her life. Because she's adopted, there's times I know that her mind has wondered. I've read some of her blogs, and I've heard as she's asked, why? Why didn't my mom clean up? Why didn't my mom get her life straight so that she could have been the mom she was supposed to be? I know David loves me. I know Heather loves me. But what about my mom? What about my dad? Why did he never step forward? Because we don't even know who he is to this day. And I know that's bothered her. Why didn't dad care enough? Why didn't he come looking for me? Why didn't he want to know me? Why didn't he search for me? I know there's always been a struggle in that identity in her life. Though she knows that we love her and we provided for her. We want her. There's always been that struggle inside her life. I know that that's there. And look at me. I want to remind us this morning. We as children of God will never, ever have to have that struggle. Why? Because we have a guarantee inside of our lives this morning. And our guarantee is not a what. Our guarantee is a who. In church, his name is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that resides inside of us. He places a guarantee that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, church, he moves inside of our lives. Verse eight, uh, verse 16 in Romans chapter 8 says this. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. He bears witness inside of us. And church, how does he bear witness of our, our adoption, if you will? By speaking truth back into our spirit. Church, he speaks directly into our hearts, directly into our lives. The knowledge and the truth giving us the confidence that we need to have, that we are who Jesus Christ says we are. Whereas my daughter in her flesh may always struggle about her real mom and her real dad, as a child of God, we will never have to struggle. Why? Because we have an inner strength. We have the Holy Spirit of God that resides inside of our lives that speaks directly into the inner portion of us that says, mine, mine. God chooses us today. And church, that's the guarantee that we can stand on. That's the promise that we can stand on. We'll never again have to walk in fear, doubt, anxiety, question. We can walk in the confidence of Jesus Christ. We can walk in the boldness and the power of Jesus Christ. Do you agree with that truth today? Are we walking in it? I know we say amen. I know that you agree with me. I know that you know this word as good as I do. You could probably preach it back to me as good as I can. My question is, why don't we walk in it? Knowing we're children of God, Knowing we have the privilege of God that we can come before him at any time, why is our tendency to run to somebody else? Why is our tendency to, to look back inside and try to fix it ourselves when we have the privilege of God? Why do we have the tendency to doubt, to question, and to fear when we have the guarantee of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us? I look at Jesus Christ as we've been walking through this book of John just to the first six chapters so far. We're looking at the miracles of Jesus and we watch the life of Jesus and we see what Jesus does. We think, you know what? My mind does anyhow. How awesome, how powerful must it have been to have been one of the disciples? To be one of the followers that got to watch and to be in the presence of Jesus when he was doing what he was doing, to watch what Jesus did. We stand in awe of him. We say, how powerful, how mighty. When church, look at me, we have the same spirit living inside of us. He now wants to use us just as he used his son when he was here. God now wants to empower us and use us through the guarantee that's inside of us to do the same work that Jesus did. And church, I think that even applies into the spirit of adoption and fostering ourselves today. As the children of God, when I'm talking about the privilege that we have, the guarantee that we have, the witness that carries inside of us, that witness is to drive us forward to live a life that's different than the rest of the world to look at the, the needs of the children that are around us and to be broken, to be compassionate, to feel that need, to see that need and to want to step forward. I was reading an article just this week as I was preparing for this and I was getting ready and I saw a pastor who walked before his church and he preached a sermon that was actually very similar, just speaking on the understanding of what's been done in our lives and how we've been called to the same thing today. And he challenged his church to step in realizing the, the need that was around them. And he gave the stats on how many homes were needed right in their area for the foster care program, how many homes were needed for adoptions right in their area. And their church made a commitment that day that they were going to fix that need. And inside that county to this day, it's the only county, only county inside the United States of America where there are more homes available and ready for foster care program and adoption than there are needs. 
And I was wondering why we can't do that here. Because I look out today and I'm looking at the families that sit here. I know you. As much as I know my own life, I know you guys. I know us. I know your compassion. I know your love. I know your heartbeat. Church, is it time for us to rise up? Is it time for us to stand up and to fill the need to stand in the gap, so to speak? Knowing that Holy Spirit that resides inside of us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, the Apostle Paul says, Now our hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts. Our hope doesn't disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Is that love recognizable? As the Holy Spirit of God now resides inside of our lives, is that love recognizable as we're touching to the world that's around us? The needs that are, reside around us. Church, Jesus Christ is calling for us to stand up this morning to be the men, the women of God, the homes of God he calls for us to be. Now I want us to look at number four, our inheritance. I want us to close out with our inheritance. Coming from verse 17, if you will, church. Paul says, and if we, if we are his children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What does that word heir mean? I put it on the screen. Heir means it's when a person is legally entitled to the property of or the rank of another. And who does the Apostle Paul say that we are heirs of? Heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Through our adoption and because of our adoption, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Heiring, church, inheriting what? Everything that is theirs. Church, to rule and to reign, to stand at the right side for all of eternity and to claim what is ours through Jesus Christ. Titus, uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 7 says this. Having been, been justified by his grace, we become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Church, I pray we're truly taking this word in this morning. As we're listening to this truth, I pray that we're soaking this in. It's through adoption this morning that we gain a privilege and a confidence that we can come into the presence of Almighty God. It's through adoption this morning that we gain the guarantee that He'll never leave us, He'll never forsake us as He places His presence inside of us. And it's inside of adoption that we gain an inheritance to know that we are forever His church. For all of eternity, we'll stand at His side. When I realize that truth, I can't help but worship when I realize that truth, church, it can't help but stir inside my life and change my life. Church, it shouldn't help but change ours as well. It's a privilege today to be able to look down and see my daughter, to see my son. It's a privilege to look across the room today and to see the foster homes that are here, the adopted homes that are here, the adopted children that sit inside this room. It's a privilege today. But church, this room should be full. As children of God today, if we truly understand what was just preached, if we truly understand what God's done for us, how could we not in turn go out and do the same thing again? Are we called to be Christians, little Christs throughout the world? Church, if they're going to look inside the church body and see love, what does our love look like? If they're going to look inside the church body and see reaction to the cross, reaction to what was done for us, what does that look like? This morning, I believe with all my heart, it should look like open arms as Jesus was for us. Open lives as Jesus Christ was for us. This morning, I want to remind you, adoption matters to God. And adoption should matter to us. Because it's forever changed our lives. But I wonder this morning how God wants to use us to forever change the life of another. As this world around us is lost, church, it's dark, it's hurting. And it's looking for that hope. It's looking for the light of Jesus. And I want to remind you this morning, we are the light. Where the light is called to penetrate the darkness is Christ is calling for us to stand. He's calling for us to stand. I'm going to close with this question this morning. Why not you? Why not you? If that's the world's statement today, that's just not for me. Why not you? If that's what Christ has done for you, why not you? Why not us? Why not be used? be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes?